हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू केनीज एडुकेट अ ग्रुप ऑफ केनी सोल्यूशन दिस इज पार्ट फाइव ऑफ लेसन नंबर टेन ग्रेविटेशन नाउ एज वी आर लाइक लाइक वी हैव ऑलमोस्ट कंप्लीटेड बट हाफ ऑफ द लेसन यू कैन से विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू ग्रेविटेशन इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस्ड ऑन how can we calculate the value of acceleration due to gravity that is a small g and then we discuss one small uh, activity or an example right so today we will be proceeding further with the rest of the part for the lesson but before i continue with that i want each one of you to revise each and everything that you have taken note of before like we have discussed on uh, some basic points with respect to gravitation then uh, importance of like universal constant how to derive the universal constant right so we have studied many things before and as we proceed further there are like chances that many things can skip out of your mind right so for that reason we are going to keep on continuing like the revision before we start the lesson so that you are also aware of what we are studying and you can even write the answers in your own words because as in when you revise it every day okay it gets into your mind and like you don't have to sit and rectify those concepts then because you are understanding those concepts by yourself as well right so everyone please revise the notes that you have like taken since part 1 because part 1 was the introductory part where i have made you aware like of many basic concepts that you should be knowing before starting with the lesson gravitation right so i just want each one of you start to by uh, you to start revising the notes that you have taken so we have started the lesson gravitation 
uh, by like discussing on the basic concepts with respect to gravitation which has been given on screen so i want each one of you to please revise it quickly So I hope everyone has gone through the concept of like how exactly the idea of gravitation had stuck uh, Newton's mind, right? So that is what has been given over here. After that, we had this activity 10.1. So I want each one of you to please go through this as well. Then we discussed on the universal law of gravitation, like what exactly it is and how can we derive the universal law, like the formula for calculating this, right?
I hope every one of you are going through it. So here we have like how can we derive the formula that it is directly proportional to the mass of the, the product of the masses and mostly proportional to the square of the distance between them. And on the basis of that we get the formula as F is equal to capital G is the gravitational constant that we have. Then product of masses divided by the square of the distance between them, right? I hope every one of you are going through it like I'll suggest you to like try to come up with the derivation and try to come up with the universal constant by your own. That will be like uh, more helpful to you instead of revising it from screen. And you should be even knowing the value of the capital G that we have gravitational constant. After this, we discussed about like Sir Isaac Newton because like he has not only worked on gravitational like universal law, but he has even like done more, uh, you can say, research for many other concepts. 
so i just want each one of you to please go through this slide and know about him like you can be asked to write about him as well and if not like the one who has made such a contribution such a great contribution you should be aware of uh, like what exactly he did and how he did that right After this here we have like more information on Newton that they have given. So I want you all to please go through this slide as well. then we even discussed on like how to calculate it right so i just want you all to please go through it quickly I hope every one of you are going through it and if you all want what you can do is you can just like look at the question and like try to solve it on your own.
After this, we have discussed on the importance of universal law of gravitation. So, I want each one of you to please go through it quickly. I hope everyone is revising it. After this, we discussed on free fall using an act, uh, like through an activity. So I just want you all to please go through it as well. So here we have like uh, an explanation on free fall that has been given. Please go through this as well.
I hope every one of you are going through this slide. After this, like we derived the value of like uh, the formula for acceleration due to gravity that is small g, which is being equal to capital G, which is the universal constant. Then we have uh, m that is the mass, and upon this r square that is the radius square. Okay.
then we discussed on like how can we calculate the value of g that is acceleration due to gravity so here, here it is and i want each one of you to know how to do it okay Then we discussed about the motion of object under the influence of gravitational force of the earth. So I want each one of you to please go through it as well.
I hope you all are going through this slide as well, everyone. Then we even discussed on this example 10.2, right? Uh, or we need to discuss it like, okay, we need to discuss it. So see, a car falls off a ledge and drops the ground in 0 0.5 second. Let G is equal to 10 meter per second for simplifying the calculation. So according to the information given, what is the speed on striking the ground you need to calculate that after that what is the uh, average speed during 0 0.5 second and how high is the ledge from the ground so we need to find this See, time given t is equal to half second. The initial velocity that we have, that is 0 meter per second, right? Because it has not started yet. And acceleration due to gravity, that is small g, is been given as uh, 10 meter per second square, right? After that, we have the acceleration of the car, that is a is equal to 10 meter per second that is downward again okay so speed we know like we just now saw the formula in the back uh, like in this slide that v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square v square is equal to u square plus 2 as right so when we have to calculate speed we will use the formula v is equal to at so acceleration is 10 and time taken is 0 0.5 second, right? So, when you calculate, you will get the answer and that will be the speed of the, like, speed on striking the ground. Okay, then when it comes to average speed, you will use the formula as u plus v upon 2. Now, you know u is 0, the initial velocity is 0, v is the final velocity and that is 5 meter per second divided by 2 and when you do that you get the answer as 2.5 meter per second so your this is how you will calculate the average speed okay so after calculating the average speed the third thing that we have to calculate is how high is the ledge from the ground so for that we need to find out the uh, you can say the distance traveled and that will be done using the formula s is equal to half a t squared so you need to insert the values and this is how they will be able to calculate all okay
I hope every one of you are going through this. After this example, we have one more example that we will be discussing. It's just that whatever formula that we have discussed, we need to apply it properly and calculate it properly. Okay. So the next example that we have is an object is thrown vertically upward and it rises to a height of 10 meter. So calculate the velocity with which the object was thrown upward and the time taken by the object to reach its highest point. Now before we start doing it, I want you all to understand the question first. Okay, so see, distance traveled that is S is equal to 10 meter, right? That becomes our distance traveled. After that, we have final velocity that is V which is equal to zero meter per second, right? Then we have acceleration due to gravity that is D, which is equal to 9.8 meter per second, right? The, uh, per second square. And then acceleration of the object is A is equal to minus 9.8 meter per second square because there is an upward motion and that is the reason we have this uh, as negative. Okay, so now we will be using the formula over here because we need to calculate velocity with which the object was moving. So the formula that we are going to use here is V is equal to U square plus 2AS. So whatever information that we have, we need to enter that like for, for the velocity part, we don't know the value for it. So we'll write 0, U square like we need to calculate that. Then 2, acceleration is minus 9.8 and distance is 10 meters right so on the basis of that like when you calculate it properly you get the answer as 14 meter per second okay and other thing that you need to uh, calculate is time taken by the object to reach the highest point so over here we'll use the formula as v is equal to u plus a t and this is how we will get the value of t that is time which is equal to 1.43 second it's just that you need to use the correct formula and you need to like do the proper calculation and that is how you will be able to find out whatever you will be asked to do. Okay.
I hope you all are going through it. After this, now we have mass to discuss. Now mass is something that you might have studied before as well. So we have learned in previous chapter that mass of an object is the measure of its inertia, right? What mass is? Mass is the measure of its inertia. And we have also learned that greater the mass, greater is the inertia. If the mass is more, inertia is more. If mass is less, inertia is less, right? And it remains the same whether the object is on earth, the moon or even in outer space. So wherever, we, wherever the object is on earth, like on the moon or like outer space anywhere, inertia is going to remain the same, that is mass is going to remain the same. Thus, mass of an object is constant and does not change from place to place. What it is? Mass of an object is constant and it does not change from place to place. This is what you should be knowing. Okay. So like you don't have much information on it. It's just that like if mass is uh, more, inertia is more. If mass is less, inertia is less then uh, it is always going to remain the same and it does not change from place to place. This is what information we have on mass. Okay. Now the next thing after this that we have is uh, weight to discuss. We'll discuss on that as well. So over here we have weight. So we know that earth attract every object with a certain force right and this force it depends upon the mass m of the object and acceleration due to gravity that is g because we know that f is equal to mg right so force is going to depend on mass and acceleration due to gravity so the weight of an object is the force with which it is attracted towards the earth so whatever weight the object has is like the force with which it is going to get attracted okay so we know that f is equal to ma that is mass into acceleration right that is a acceleration is like you can say we can also know this acceleration as acceleration due to gravity so we can represent that by g as well right so the force of attraction of the earth on an object is known as the weight of the object. Getting it? What? What I said, what is the weight of object? The force of attraction of the earth on an object is known as weight of that object. Okay, now this is very important that you know about mass and weight in short. So we denote the weight as capital W 
and substituting the same in equation 10.14 that is f is equal to mg we get the like we get the formula as w is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity okay so this like there's nothing much to know over here we have like see as the weight of the uh, object is the force with which it is attracted towards the earth the SI unit of weight is same as that of the force that is Newton. So the SI unit of both like force is force and weight is going to remain the same that is Newton. Okay. Then the weight is a force acting vertically downward and it has both magnitude and direction. And we have already learned that the value of G is going to be given like constant at a given place. Therefore, at a given place. The weight of object is directly proportional to mass, that is m of the object. So we can say that w is directly proportional to small m, that is mass. And it is due to this reason that at a given place, we can use the weight of an object as the measure of its mass. Right? So the mass of the object remains the same everywhere that is on earth or on any planet. Whereas its weight depends on its location because the acceleration due to gravity depends on location. So the mass can be same everywhere. But the weight will differ whenever like the place changes because the gravitational constant is different everywhere, right? So now I want you to write about like mass and then you'll be even writing about the weight part. After this, you can even write about the weight part and then I'll end for today. But make sure you're taking note of it because you need to revise it as well, right?
I hope you all are writing it. I hope every one of you have written it. So now we will be discussing about the weight of an object on moon in the next class. Okay. So we'll be starting from here in the next class where we will be discussing the weight of an object on the moon in detail. We will be doing one example as well with respect to that. So then we after discussing that we have thrust and pressure to discuss as well like what exactly thrust and pressures uh, pressure is with respect to two different situations which have been given okay then after that we have example 10.6 to discuss in detail with the solution given then after that we will be even discussing on pressure and fluids in detail then we have buoyancy to discuss in detail after buoyancy we have activity 10.4 which, which we will be discussing again in detail okay then we will be discussing on like why objects float or sink when placed on the surface of water so this is again very important we'll be discussing that through activity okay and then we have the most important part again which i feel is important that is archimedes principle so we'll be discussing on this as well like one question which i feel very important is universal law of gravitation
and the other one is Archimedes principle. Both of like them are very important. You can get a very direct question on that. Then we will be discussing on relative density as well, like what exactly it is and how can we calculate that. So we'll be discussing it through an example again, like if you have been asked to calculate the relative density, how you're going to calculate that. And then we have the summary discussion for the whole lesson that is gravitation. So whatever we have discussed uh, in the whole lesson, we will, do it. we will be doing a short summary on that. And then we have like uh, questions to discuss at the end. So I'm going to show you all the exercise questions one by one. And I want each one of you to please go through them properly because you are the one who's going to answer me all the questions. So make sure you are well prepared.
I hope every one of you are going through the question. So this is how we will be like ending up with the lesson gravitation. Okay. So make sure like you all are revising everything that we have discussed till now in the part in this part. So I'll be continuing with the rest of the part for the lesson. In the next class, make sure you revise each of them. Okay. So I'll end this part over here. Thank you everyone.